Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Carex and we're going to be doing some opening moves for Muscovy. Now we've already set up our country. We've looked at the estates. We've looked at the diplomatic situation. We've looked at uh, sort of just the general uh, opportunities and threats and uh, strengths and weaknesses of the country here. So what we're basically trying to do now is we're trying to build up money and build up manpower so that we can get up to a full force limit. And to do that, we're going to need 5,000 more troops in production. Let's unpause the game and start rolling here. Once we get up to 100% uh, manpower, or sorry, force limit, we will be able to get permanent claims on all of Novgorod, and we will have a fantastic excuse to attack them. They've actually allied these guys down here, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to actually need some dudes standing by over here to just come down here and beat these guys up really quick in the war against Novgorod. So I think we'll have, uh, that's what we'll do. We'll have 14,000 up here, so putting pressure here, and we'll have uh, a stack down here just to swoop down and, and just pop these guys when the war starts. So if our allies are asking us for royal marriages, absolutely. We need to make sure to go around and do the uh, do the royal marriages for all the others that have not asked yet. Now these guys are a little kind of, they're a republic, so they're not actually likely to do that. Looks like they've set up a trade league. It looks like these guys are the only member of the trade league. They're guaranteeing the independence of these guys. That's not going to help them or anything like that. getting very close here to having our we could just wait a little bit here these guys don't have the morale to move that's okay hmm we're making six ducats per month if we were to actually raise up the armies we'd be still technically making money per month let's try to actually get up to um, let's get up to 30 gold and then let's get a little closer. Well, it's going to only take four months, but then it'll take a couple months to make the troops. So how many months is it going to take? Ooh, Poland's actually rivaled us. So they do not like us anymore. Let's start working on Denmark instead. Let's start working on Denmark, Denmark instead here. Poland is out the window. I don't know why they switched the rivalry to us. They, um, oh, they PU'd uh, Lithuania. Okay, nice. Good for them. Good for them. So we have the money in order to uh, engage. But we need to get the morale up and we need the manpower. So hopefully over the next couple of months we'll build back up our morale. For our troops and we will get the manpower next month we will start building our last unit and what is this guy let's here let's build this thing is this the wait a second is this the same thing that we get from here is it the same thing we get from here i don't know if we want to build those i'm going to wait to get those guys for free eventually I'm going to wait to get these for free. So once this troop is built, we will have that mission done. We'll get permanent claims on Novgorod. Almost there. These guys are sort of building up. We can come up here and get them ready to engage on the northern front. Hopefully our, uh, our force limit doesn't go up. It shouldn't. Nothing should change it. There we go. Boom. Casa Spellies on. We will be attacking at the, uh, at the, I think now, basically. We have no diplomat to send. No. I doubt they've mothballed their fourth fort, I think. So I think they only have one. Yeah, Sweden has one there on the edge, but we won't be at war with Sweden. This is going to be a 10 to 1 ratio on these guys, which is quite nice. I think this is it. I think we do it for Novgorod, guys. Overwhelming odds. Five to one almost. Let's get this guy. Let's get Dimitri on that stack. Let's have our ruler controlling this stack. 
Now our heir is still kind of young, right? So ideally, if if our if well, we have a queen, we could take over too. So I don't think a regency is in. We're not at risk of a regency or anything. We're at war. That should actually make all of our subjects pretty happy with us. That's going to be a ten to one ratio here. So that should be a no battle. And then we can move some of these people off and have them come up here and regroup up here. We're going to kind of need our, our allies to kind of like group up and be logical here. A question of rights. Wait, what? Was it telling us the siege? Oh, we could take this for ourselves. Or we could lose our claim on it. Well, is it, is it a claim or it's just a claim? Hmm. I think losing our claim on that is irrelevant. They're our subject and they like us, so. We're absolutely going to be taking attrition here. We're even losing money, it seems. We should actually start gaining a little bit of money, I would think, from the looting. We'll have to see how that goes when the loot and Spoils of War ticks in. Yeah, with Spoils of War, we're making some good money. Attrition is a thing, though. We have basically no manpower, so um, not good. Not good. Yeah, we attack during winter. What are we doing over here? What are we doing? None of these little sieges up here actually matter is the thing. Novgorod is the thing that matters. Novgorod is going to be a bad battle, though, for us. If they want to attack into us, we need to make sure that we're able to reinforce and support Novgorod. So these troops up here are going to have to come up here and stand by. We're going to take a lot of attrition sitting on Novgorod. Hopefully winter is going to be ending here in a few months, though, luckily. Come into a spring. National unrest. Diplomatic reputation. Reinforce speed is not important, but if we had a manpower modifier, that would be good. But this guy's level 2. Fort defense, I mean, that's kind of interesting, but... Oh, they actually have a fort down here, too, huh? Looks like they are trying to move to potentially engage us here in Novgorod. That's going to be one of the best battles they can take. We do have a good leader. Their leader is not terrible, though. Oof, if we could engage some of these guys in such a way that they don't group up and reinforce the main stack down here, that would be very good. But man, that's going to be a lot of attrition coming up here. Looks like we're going to engage somebody here, though. It's going to be a, a pretty decisive battle. Looks like our, our subjects are doing a good job at sort of peppering around here. That was a stack wipe, and we're losing men left, right, and center. We don't have a lot of manpower to reinforce all these stacks either. That's going to be a long siege on Novgorod. I forgot they had the fort down here. Supply limit there is a 12, actually. Wow. Our subjects are doing a good job at sort of blanketing the map. These guys look like they're rotating around. They're kind of being a little goofy. Are they going north? Yeah, they are. Yeah, our subjects are, unfortunately, they're kind of just getting trounced. Supply limits come up quite a bit now that the uh, winter's ended. I mean, if we could, like, engage here, that would be really, really good. I don't know where they're going, though. We should have came down. Okay, it says we're still going to catch them, though. It's going to be a good battle there with these cavalry. Those cavalry are expensive, and they're dead. Yeah, these guys are really cleaning up a lot of our vassals' troops, though. We just need... If Novgorod falls, it's, it's going to be kind of a GG here. Um, of course, but it's going, it's slowly going. 
We just need we just need the the admin points. I think. Are we making enough money? Yeah, we're well. What, that's that's with spoils of war. That theologian's gonna allow us to actually yeah. Institution spread is good, but you know what? I think um, missionary strength is gonna be better. Yeah, that's gonna be a stat. That's gonna be like a stack wipe. Um, what I'm realizing here. There's actually, there's a few things kind of going on here. Close. and that. Dang, they have to go all the way around like that. That's not good. But it makes sense. I'm just thinking technically if we engaged here with our good leader... Our good leader is now free to kind of move about. That's actually... Are they moving to there? No, they're moving up. Because that would almost be a decent place to fight if they wanted to step on that for a second. Just kind of keeping an eye on them. We have good vision over the place. Yeah, this is so rough. This is so rough trying to siege down Novgorod. The attrition is just absolutely insane. I, I I hate those missions that force you to build up to our force limit. We didn't need to build up to our force limit to win this war. But now we're just at no manpower because, well, force limit apparently, huh? Well, what we might actually do is we maybe should actually be shift consolidating and seeing if we can get rid of some of these groups. That's actually probably the play. That's done. Nice. If we can actually do some shift consolidations, that could be really good. But man, if we could just take this too, that would be, uh, that would loosen us up quite a bit. Unfortunately, our subjects are just being like complete bozos here. I don't know if they want to stack up on us so they don't die randomly doing whatever they're doing. I mean, presumably Novgorod's losing men too doing this too, right? And they're losing attrition just running around. They're going to DC just so I don't think they can afford more men, though. I don't think they have any any manpower. Wow, they have 6,000 manpower. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. We certainly don't. We need 4,000 dudes to fully reinforce here. Novgorod has fallen. Okay. So we should be able to move freely now. I don't think we need 10,000. We're just going to need 3,000 for this one. If we could take both their forts, then the war will be 100%ing we'll be them. Novgorod was the actual war goal too, wasn't it? Yeah, so now we're getting the taking war goal. Maybe we shouldn't have done Novgorod, but I just wanted to make sure that once we got Novgorod, then the whole thing we'd be able to just hold on. Um, basically, essentially, now that we have that, like they can't possibly take it from us was kind of my thought process, I guess. We should just be able to kind of hang out here. None of this stuff up here matters. We have the ticking war score, and as soon as we take that fort, then we'll be good. We could actually probably go up to speed four. Just be careful here. Um, they're going to de-siege a bunch of things, but that's okay. We actually have a core on this province, which is kind of interesting. 
which is kind of neat. So presumably when we take that, um, oh, that's funny. We don't have a claim on it. We only have a core on it. Or can you not have a claim and a core on something? Maybe you can't. Hey, maybe actually see something down that belongs to us. Sneaky dudes. Need a 14% over here. Okay. And there's no way that it's possible to lose this war. It's just one of those things. 7%. Once this is done, we'll be good to go. Holy cow, I don't want to lose one stability. So the reputation is tarnished, and we're going to lose a bunch of diplomatic uh, dip diplomatic power to undo that, apparently. The fact that Novgorod is just absolutely just murking through our subjects' troops is kind of annoying, but that was a good win by them. Looks like the subjects did actually rally and win that. 21% though, and the war is over. We can do it. 35% and the war is over. There we go. The war is over. What do we want here? Well, we need Novgorod. And I, if we take that, we don't have to re-siege down there for it. But what I'm trying to kind of do is, like, can we create a line, right? Can we create a line here? This is kind of neat because that's actually like a, um, a core. It would cost us a little bit of diplo, but we wouldn't have to pay any admin to take that, which is kind of appealing. That's looking like a nice peace deal right there, right? It's looking like a nice peace deal. Second war, we could take the rest of them. That gets rid of both their forts, so the next war would be easy to do. We sealed them off from Sweden, so Sweden can't try to get claims on them and, and then sort of get land. Um, so we're not going to split any of this with Norway or Sweden or anything like that, or Denmark. I don't think we're ever going to be able to do a, a reconquest war just for the one province. So I think if we just take this... Actually, is there a way to go in and have them return? Uh, no. No, we're just going to have to take it this way. It ends up being a perfect 100. I mean, maybe it'd be cool to take their money and stuff too because our money situation is not going to be great, but our economy is pretty good overall. I think that's it. I think we just take the 100, which is relatively cheap here. And those forts actually aren't terrible. Yeah, we, our forts are not bad. But I'm wondering if we get rid of this one. What do we get rid of Novgorod? Because that one's a little bit more of a forward position. It's a good sort of field of view. And this guy's got a fort too. Maybe because this guy has a fort, we don't need a fort here. Oh, did we have our forts on during that war? We probably didn't need them on, to be honest. We can turn this back on to deal with rebels, because we will have rebels, no doubt. And they'll be spawning in Novgorod. So that fort, actually, that reminds me. That, that makes that fort quite good to keep, keep around. Um, we're definitely going to want to reduce uh, our army maintenance quite a bit. I don't think we need to sit in Novgorod. Let's... Twenty one twenty one thousand troops can sit there. Let's do that. At least that's even during February. Let's get these guys down here. Um posturing uh, in the southern area. I'm almost kinda tempted though to like slim down our numbers. We just don't need this many troops. But man, our vassals did get hammered though, no joke. We've become a great power, that's pretty cool. So presumably we've got a lot of power projection, right? Because they were a rival. Are they still a valid rival? They might not be. 
Unfortunately, no. Let's do Poland. Let's do Poland. That's going to be a long time rival, I'm sure. We actually have the ability to start gaining sailors and thus gaining um, ships to protect trade in the uh, Novgorodian area. Now, we should be collecting in Novgorod. Yeah, we earned Novgorod, so that's going to be a big boon. But it looks like there's actually another important province here that we don't have yet. Otherwise, it looks like we have basically all of the important centers of trade in this area between us and our subjects, right? That's a subject controlled. And then this one only is the one that we need. There are two ant army groups there. If we go to our government here, we can see these are definitely going up. Oh, interesting. So these actually go up based on the amount of monarch points that our leader has. Interesting. These seem like these will be interesting buttons to potentially hit. I don't know if it lets us hit all three or if they sort of share a cooldown or, or how that works exactly, but... Uh, yeah, there's no reason not to state this, right? Yeah, no reason not to. It's a core province of ours. We could be drilling, but instead we're just opting to make money, I guess. How much would it cost to drill our armies? Basically all of our, our profit margin now. We have corruption due to overextension. Let's make sure we're getting that corruption gone. Overextension score is going to go away as these come in. Why is this one... Uh, did we not... Uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Do we not have a permanent claim on this province? Yeah, we do. Oh, it's a different it's a different culture. Oh yeah, yeah, it's the Sami culture. It's not an accepted culture, so it's taking longer for that core to come in. That's gonna make a big difference stability wise. If we go to the actual regions here, the mega regions, the subcontinents, we can notice that all of this is Eastern Europe, except for actually this up here actually counts as Western Europe, which is kind of crazy to think about. So I don't think we want to actually state this here. I don't think we really want to make it a trade company either. We're just going to let this kind of flounder up here, though. I think we're going to want to state everything else, though. Which is going to cost more admin. I do understand that. But I think basically the idea is just state kind of everything. Yeah, just state everything that's within our our Eastern Europe subcontinent. Um, the only thing that would be tricky about that is if we did start taking a lot of land in Western Europe, how we how we would deal with that. But I mean, I think if all of this, I don't know, can this get down to Constantinople? Or can Constantinople somehow come up? Lusa goes up. Baltic goes up to... Th that goes up to there. Yeah, I don't think there's a single line that sends it this way. I would get basic Kiev, Crimea. If it goes in through Crimea, then we could send it up, but... Like Persia. But yeah, Constantinople, unfortunately. There's no way for us to send this down to Constantinople. There's no way for us to send Constantinople up to the White Sea. Yeah, this is it is set up in such a way that if you're sort of a historical Russia, you do uh, you can get a, a good amount of trade. But um, if you do come and take over Turkey and uh, the Balkans and stuff, even if it is in your your Eastern Europe subcontinent, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't feed well back into your where you would probably be uh, collecting money. So in order to do that, we're going to have to core those though, which is going to be expensive. That goes all of our admin just gone, poof, gone. We're going to want to switch this back, I think. Um, but it's good that we're paying for this dude here. 
Make it some big money now that we've done this, though. Or defense, eh. I mean, I think we just want this guy for the, for the points, right? More than anything. 50% cheaper production, dude, and we gain some prestige, or we could just make money. At 50% reduced cost, we might be able to afford that guy. He's only a buck fifty a month. I think we grab him. He might even help pay for himself. We don't really need that unrest modifier guy. There is going to be a Novgradian uh, unrest. It is just it just is what it is. We know what's coming. We'll be ready for it. Renaissance has spawned, and I think for the most part, guys, we are pretty well set up for. So actually, what are we going to need to do in order to get uh, these permanent claims over here? We need to own. One of the following must be true. Province is orthodox. Culture is at least one province. Tam Bav area. So we need one of these provinces here to be orthodox or our culture. So basically we need to conquer it and convert it. It could take a while, but it does open up free permanent clan. It's a big deal. So we do want to be building up spy networks on these. Uh, one on the Golden Horde to get this one. One on the Kazan to get this one. We don't know who is going to be the more opportune uh, attack point. Denmark is um, asking us for military access. I denied it, but for the most part. Whoa, Denmark. What's going on, dude? Attack against Lithuania, huh? Scotland, Teutonic Order, Lithuania, they might actually do okay there, especially if Sweden ends up going disloyal. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. No, they look pretty loyal. That's going to be a, a pretty decisive victory, I think, for, for Denmark with the loyal subjects there. For the cost of that goes up too high with the uh, with the Renaissance, we're gonna we're gonna take our technologies. It would be really really good to get this because that would be a way to to use our our money right to invest in temples and stuff. And that also ties into this, the land of churches here, which is really, really important. We haven't really talked much about our patriarch authority, but getting this up will give us uh, missionary strength and local unrest and extra local manpower for orthodox provinces, which is absolutely incredible. It will decrease local unrest. Do, do, do. How do we build this, though? I think events and stuff mostly, but I'm not sure if there's anything we can do specifically to get this to be boost to boost this up. I don't know if like building churches and stuff would actually help that go up. Um, but events should be popping up that allow us to do that. Okay, we've got this on the we got the one claim on the Great Horde. It's the last one we're gonna need there. For the most part, guys, I think this is a successful uh, start here as Muscovy, a very clean. Against Novgorod, we lost a lot of our manpower, but it's bouncing back. Denmark actually likes us enough to accept the alliance, but here's the tricky thing is we do not have the available diplomatic reputation slot in order to do that. We're still two years away from being able to integrate some of these subjects. Do we just take the diplomacy hit until then? We're already losing one because of national focus. Um... I like the idea of allying Denmark. Let's just keep them happy. Let's keep them happy here. And uh, we'll ally them maybe once we get, in a couple of years, once we get one of these smaller dudes integrated. Because it's very hard to get an alliance as not a Muscovy early in the game. So if, if Denmark wants to be our buddy, it's like, sure, why not? You know, why not? Whoa, we made a huge mistake early on. We forgot to actually revoke Crownland. Oh my gosh. And if we had done that at the beginning of the game, I don't think they would have been pissed. Oh my gosh, we messed that up. That's okay. We're going to raise up. We're just going to fight these rebels. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong there? We should have done that earlier. We're losing a lot of taxation because of that. And I think it was actually affecting negatively affecting uh, Liberty Desire and our subjects too. For the most part though, guys, yeah, we, we should have done that early. Anyways, Muscovy... Uh, it's looking pretty good. Muscovy, of course, is a fantastic beginner nation or even an intermediate nation. 
And uh, that was a, a great war against Novgorod. I think that was a fantastic peace deal, too. We've sort of uh, sequestered them away so that we can eat them on our own. Uh, when the truce is up, they have no allies either. So in 12 years, we'll be able to go and attack Novgorod and just scoop up the rest of them. In fact, we can double check down here that they are at 131% for a full annexation, but I think the permanent claims might bring that down. I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know why it's saying 131% because this land is pretty junk land. So uh, I think one more, it might take two wars to get rid of them completely, but for the most part, um, that's going to be an inevitable outcome. And as we do that, we'll continue to build up our strength. There's a lot of our culture group in here too. So these provinces are particularly useful to us right out of the get-go. We have rebels. We're going to have to deal with the rebels that have spawned and also the rebels that are going to be spawning with the Novgorodian separatists and things like that. So we're going to be dealing with rebels and, and working on our economy and stuff like that as we beat up Novgorod and then come down here and start beating up the hordes. And uh, thanks everybody for uh, watching this these opening moves from Muscovy. I will see you guys in the next one.